Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Uh, we shall start our class with the Umul Kitab Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihtina firat al-mustaqim. Firat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. Ghayril magdubi alayhim. Waladhalin. Amin. Alright. Okay, now. Sorry. Okay, now we will start the class uh, of the chromatography uh, technique. The first one is the most simplest chromatography technique, which is the uh, thin layer chromatography or TLC. All right. This is a really short one. Uh, the simplest concept of chromatography. Okay, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Right, thanks. Yes. All right. All right. So what is TLC, all right? For TLC, remember the mobile face and uh, stationary face, okay? For, oh, sorry. For TLC, the mobile face is liquid, right? Sorry. Okay, the mobile face is liquid. And the stationary phase is solid and it is uh, categorized as liquid chromatography. So TLC is only a thin layer chromatography. It's only a, a piece of thin film that we, we, will, we will do an experiment on the thin film. Okay, that, that film will be the, um, the stationary phase. It's like the, uh, your, your simplest experiment, okay, um, your tissue experiment, all right? Okay, it is done exactly as it says using thin, a thin uniform layer of silica gel, okay, SiO2, or alumina, Al3O3, Al, Al2O3, alumina, okay, coated onto a piece of glass, metal, or rigid plastic as a stationary face. All right, so oh, this is the structure of the uh, silica, for example, a silica gel of a thin layer, uh, thin film, a, thin, uh, a silica gel type of thin film. The principles can be partition, adsorption, or ion exchange depending on the stationary phase used. Meaning that the, the type of the uh, separation principle that we have learned previously, it will depend on the, uh, the, the type of the stationary phase, which is the thin film itself, what is made from silica, alumina, and so on. Right? And may be performed on the analytical scale as means of monitoring the progress of a reaction or on the preparative scale to purify small amounts of a compound, okay? This is how the uh, we illustrate the thin film, okay? Number one is different molecules are carried up the plate to different distance due to the variable interaction with the adsorbent material, meaning that if we put different material on the, on the thin film, it will move, uh, uh, the distance is different, uh, vary, vary with the, uh, interaction of the uh, sample itself, of the compound itself, with the stationary phase, which is the thin film. For example, when the silica used uh, as a stationary phase, polar molecules, polar, uh, you remember polar? The molecule that have two charge, okay? The, for example, we have a, a hydroxy group on the molecule, or amine, NH2, it is now a polar molecule. Okay, will tend to form hydrogen bonds with the silica matrix SiOH groups and will therefore not move as fast as the plate because our compound now polar, it will favor, you know, polar love polar. So it will favor to, to attract with this stationary phase. It will make the, the compound move slower than, than the other compounds uh, which are not polar. So it will move slower. For the compound which is uh, non-polar, it will move faster because the polar uh, doesn't love, uh, the non-polar doesn't love the polar, meaning that the, the polar uh, substance, the polar compounds uh, do not love the polar stationary phase, which is the thin film. While relatively non-polar molecules will have fewer interaction with the matrix and will tend to be more soluble in the solvent phase and therefore rise faster. This is what I mean, okay? 
So this is how the thin film looks like. This is a, a, the, the mobile face, right? This is how we put the compounds on the thin film. Just use a small, uh, you know, a needle or dropper, okay? The sample is packed spot at one of the end of the plate, all right? And the plate is placed in a chamber containing a small amount of solvent. We put a small amount of solvent at the bottom of the small chamber, and then we put the, our, our thin film there with a spot of the compounds, and then it will move upwards, right? The solvent gradually move up the plate via capillary action, carrying the substance along with, uh, with it, and at different rates, the components are absorbed onto the cell channel phase, right? And then we can see the separated components appear as, as a series of spots that different location along the plate. The spots are visualized directly or observed under UV light or reagent uh, to make them visible. Okay, some of the uh, spots can be visualized using uh, UV light or any reagent that uh, because it it cannot be uh, you know it cannot be see cannot be seen by our naked eye. Some of the compound will be seen under the UV light or we need to put some reagents to see the final uh, spot, right? All right, qualitative analysis. So this is how to uh, visualizing the unseen compound, okay? The colored compounds we, that we, we, we can see with our direct visual detection with the naked eye. So other compounds is uh, we use in direct methods, for example, a UV lamp or spray with a reagent, uh, okay? Uh, is uh, For example, iodine vapor, or concentrated uh, sulfuric acid for all organic compounds, it will be turned into a brown or black color, okay? And we use also an anhydrine for uh, one degree and two degree amines, and it will form a purple or brown color. And fluoro fluorosecamine, uh, which is means uh, fluorescent, it will be colored, okay? And um, with two for DNPH for carbonyl, it will turn into an orange and yellow color. Right, now, how to calculate the retention factor, RF. Remember this formula. The RF value for a substance uh, is the ratio of the distance that the substance travels to the distance that the solvent travels up the plate. So the best ratio is 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. Right, look at the uh, photo. How to use a pen like I used previously? Oh, I need to annotate first. All right, you can see here, this is the solvent front, and then this is the solvent at the beginning of the uh, reaction. We put the thin film inside the vial with a, a, a small amount of solvent at the bottom, All right? This is the sample that we put the dot here. Right, it's the dx the distance between the first introduced sample with the compound that have been separated. Right, this is the blue and yellow, and this one uh, yellow with dot is the uh, components of the in the compound that have been separated. Right, after some particular time, okay, we we just uh, put the TLC film inside the vial with some solvents with the dots two dots of the uh, sample, okay? And then now when the uh, the solvent pass through going up, okay, with the capillary factor, right? Like the tissue. So it will bring up the components of the uh, samples that we have been, uh, you know, we have, we have put here at the bottom and the components will be separated according to the, uh, you know, a separation factor, the ionic exchange, uh, absorption, of, and so on, depend on the uh, type of the stationary phase or the thin film itself. Right, we can see now the dx is the distance between the, the, the sample dots, all right, with the first component. So this dx is the component itself, so this dx. So distance between uh, the, the solvent, uh, solvent layer, all right, or, or we call as the uh, uh, this is a solvent front. Uh, no, solvent front is here. This is the bottom one, the, the, the layer of the solvent that we have introduced at the beginning. And it is uh, symbolized as DS, right? 
distance of the solvent front. This is a solvent front, okay? The end of the, uh, the end line of the erection, we call as solvent front, okay? The distance between the solvent front and the, the first, uh, you know, the, 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 the level of the solvent at the beginning, we call as DS or distance of a solvent front. Distance of components, okay? The first introduce a sample, and then the components that have been separated is dx. So Rf is uh, dx divided by ds. Okay, this one dx, right? Divided by ds. Right, ds is the the solvent layer, the first uh, at uh, the beginning solvent layer with the end of uh, end level of the experiment, or we just put somewhere after the experiment has been done, okay? So the distance between dx and uh, ds, uh, the, the, the ratio of dx and ds is the RF, okay? A good solvent system is uh, one that moves all components of your mixture of the baseline, uh, but does not put anything on the solvent front, right? RF values between 0 0.15 and 0 0.85, that's the best one. So very polar additive, for example, met, okay, the, 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 the polar ranking is uh, methanol, higher than ethanol, higher than isopropanol. And moderately polar additive is such as acetonitrile, okay, uh, more polar than uh, ethyl acetate, uh, more polar than chloroform, more polar than uh, dichloromethane, diethyl ether, and toluene. And non-polar additive such as uh, cyclohexane, petroleum ether, hexane or pentane, this is non-polar, and common combination of solvent uh, that uh, always used is ethyl acetate uh, and hexane uh, with a 0 to 30% most popular combination, and ether and pentane, 40% uh, of uh, 0 to 40% uh, is very popular, and ethanol and hexane or pentane is uh, Five to three thirty percent useful for very polar compound. So application of TLC is mainly qualitative analysis. Uh, determine the number of components is in a mixture, separation and the identification of colors, uh, preservative, a sweetening agent, and various cosmetic products. We still use this uh, simple chromatography technique for uh, the industrial, you know, identification of the additive, color, preservative, uh, and various. Uh, cosmetic products and to determine the ident and uh, the, the identity of two substances, for example, the natural products uh, that like volatile oil or essential oil, fixed oil, wax, uh, terpenes, alkaloids, glycosides, steroids, and so on and more. And then biochemical analysis also use this technique to isolate or separate the uh, biochemical metabolites, uh, for example, blood plasma, serum, urine, and so on. And to judge the purify of a synthes synthesized uh, compound industry, for example, a direct comparison is done between the sample and the standard, okay, um, or at authentic sample. If an if any impurity is detected, then it shows extra spots, and this can detect be detected easily. For example, in pharmaceutical, right? If uh, if the the you know the uh, the standard compound uh, will be compared with the uh, the sample. If if the, there are some impurity, it will be easily detected because some com impurity compound, uh, the extra spot will be easily found on the thin film. So we know that the, the, the original mixture has been added with something else, right? And to indicate the extent of a progress of a chemical reaction, for example, we, if we do some reaction, okay, and then we, if you want to check the either the reaction is complete or not, we will have we will take a sample and then we'll do a TLC test to assess uh, whether the reaction is complete or not. If the reaction is not complete, so maybe it's uh, there will be uh, uh, you know uh, no uh, suspected spot that we want, right? The expected spot that we want, so. Uh, we can we can use we can check the reaction is the complete or not also using the TLC method, all right? Also used in the checking distillation for palm and oil industry, right? Um, 
Okay, uh, that's all for the thin layer chromatography technique. All right? Today we will learn only about the simplest chromatography technique, which is the thin layer. It is very, uh, you know, the, the very simple chromatography technique, right? And still used uh, until nowadays for, uh, you know, um, as a screening, uh, screening um, uh, level of an experiment, okay, to identify something, impurities and so on. We still use the uh, TLC methods, all right? It is uh, considered as a qualitative method, right? Uh, you have any question about this TLC method? The most important one that you need to know is the calculation. Normally, the question will, 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 will be asked on the calculation in the TLC experiment. So the solvent front is the end uh, of the, uh, you know, the... At the uh, end of no. the thin film experiment, yes, Gehad, you have a question. Yes, for the DX. Can you what? explain it further, please? What for the what? Distance of component. Distance of component is the distance between the first introduce when we when we first take the uh, the thin film and we put the spot here. Okay, I will uh, use the pen. Okay. At the beginning of the experiment, all right, we put the sample spot here, right? And then after that, it will travel up, right? For example, uh, we need to know about this, the first component right here. This is our first spot. So dx is from here to here, right? And at the end of the experiment, okay, uh, we can see no more compounds appear on the uh, thin layer film and then we put a line there this is the elutant front there is no exact rule on how to put the uh, solvent front or elutant front as long as it's uh, a little bit uh, you know uh, up from the last component that have been appear so we put there as a, a solvent front or elutant front so right for a for example this one this is the solvent uh, you know this is the uh, the baseline of the solvent right we put right for example uh, the at the beginning we put the sample here right and now we can see the 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 pink dot appear here so this is a distance between the first uh, dot we, that we put the sample okay the baseline and this is the the first component appear uh, the pink component appear so the distance is dx all right so also we can use another symbol we can use a all right so uh, the distance the distance between um, the baseline all right with the elutant front that we have, we have put here there is b all right so that is ds all right so rf is equal a Divide by B, that's all, right? And you really have to rem remember the, uh, sorry. You have to remember what is the best value of the RF. Okay, a good solvent system is one that moves all components of your mixture of the baseline but does not put anything on the solvent front, right? So it is between the RF value is between 0 0.15 and 0 0.85. So maybe the question in the, uh, for example, final exam, it will ask about does the solvent system of the TLC experiment is good or not? Then you have to calculate the RF. If you get lower than this, for example, you have 0 0.1 or larger than this, 0 0.9, of course, you can say that the solvent system is not good, all right? Because the RF value is larger or lower than the range, all right? So the, the, the question regarding TLC method always about the calculation, and you can decide between uh, either the, uh, the solvent system is good or not, all right? So it's only based on this. DS, uh, DX divided by DS.
Okay. So there are two different values. Uh, wait, wait for a while. A good solution system is one that moves all components of a mixture in the baseline, but not the post. But this one is 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. Right, let me clarify. Uh, what is the best value actually? Okay. Wait for a while. All right. Can you guys find also what is the best value for RF to clarify? Because uh, I have a different value here. You can Google or search somewhere else for a while. We can discuss together. We have a lot of value that I have found here. Some say that between 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. Yes. But just stick to the value that at, uh, wait for a while. I think just stick to the to the value that I have uh, shown previously. Okay. 
but this one is re really far, right? 0 0.4 and 0 0.15 is really far. Right, I will clarify this one with the experts um, on the chromatography. Okay, and then I will, uh, I will, um, you know, I will announce in the group after this. Okay, for right now, you, you have any other question? Because the, the, the basically the question about a TLC in the exam and test and so on, it is only about the uh, RF value, for example, right? The calculation, the simple calculation, right? And then um, I will give all the notes about chromatography in the e-learning. And now about the assignment I have, uh, I have asked before this for you to uh, take to do a simple experiment on chromatography and submit it. All right. So uh, as I discuss, uh, and then it need to be submitted um, properly in the form of image. All right. In the e-learning have you submit that yes right you uh, submit uh every single of you have submit in the e-learning you, do you see the e-learning uh slot on the submission of the of the of the uh assignment previously i put it um Yes, yeah, simple chromatography individual assignment. Right? Let me see what about the uh, deadline. How many photos, bro, do we have to submit? Uh, the best one, only one. Or maybe the photo is combination of several photo that you have. Uh, you do several uh, experiments and then you combine it in one photo and put your name there on the photo and submit it. Right? All right, I put there the, the, the deadline is Monday, 11 January at 12 a.m. So uh, the time remaining is three days and 14 hours. So make sure you have, you will, you, you submit that in the e-learning. Okay. Clear that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So do you have any question? Because I have not, I, I need to go somewhere else. We only learn about TLC technique today. The simplest one. And for our next class, we will learn the, class. We will learn another technique which is more complex, which is SPLC, GC, and so on. Do you have any question? Yes, bro. For the assignment, uh, what we have to do exactly? You, some colors and paper. All right. Uh, you you take a tissue, right, or any any uh, substance like a paper and so on that you can make as the stationary face. And put a, a color substance, for example, uh, some of you put m and uh, candies. And some of you put uh, fruits, all right, that have colors as the, uh, as the uh, you know, as the uh, sample like this. Put at the bottom and then um, you need to actually put uh, some water, okay, for, the, for your color substance to move, right, like the TLC, all right. And then we can see the movement of your color sub color compounds, right? Like the TLC method. It's it's not exactly like the TLC, but the simplest one is using tissue, right? That I have shown before this uh, in the first class in the photo that uh, we can put any substance that have color and see how it travel up, right? Using the 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 thing that we have in our home, like kitchen tissue, papers, and so on. Just do like that, right? If you don't know, uh, ask your friends that have uh, do the experiment, all right? How they do it, and then you use maybe you you can use another material such as uh, you know uh, your you have what in your kitchen? You have a coloring agent, all right, in your kitchen that your mom always use for to make a cake and so on. You you have a color ingredient, color colorful, uh, not colorful, colored fruits and colored flowers or something else that is natural you can use all that all right just take a photo the best photo or combination of photo combine it and then put your name there or you want to selfie there it's up to you based on your creativity and submit in a form of image in the e-learning right jpeg uh, png gif and so on right is that clear yes 
Okay, thank you and uh, see you again after this. Right, or some of you want to scan the attendance? Right, thank you and Assalamualaikum, I will share the screen for attendance.